Hey guys, welcome back to yet another video. Today, I want to show you all the newest ultralight in my collection. I decided to go with the Akuma Cielo Rod. Now this is a five foot ultralight, two piece construction. And generally when it comes to ultralight rods or rods in general, anything under six feet, I prefer to have a one piece. Personally, I just like the feel of them more and I can see this being a bit of a weak point on much larger fish, but hopefully I don't have to worry about that. I've had Akuma stuff in the past and I've never had an issue, so time will tell with this. Overall though, very nice looking rod, brown in color, so it'll go with just about any reel you have. The one thing I did notice is that this eyelet right here is bent up a little bit in shipping, but it's still intact. It still be, seems to be in one piece, not a whole lot of damage, so not too worried about it. I'm gonna stick with it. I got this for $25, excellent deal. And the action on this, super soft. That's exactly what I want for bluegill fishing. If I get a little bit larger crappie, I can definitely bring it in with this thing. But this will allow me to cast, you know, one and 30 second ounce jig heads at decent distance, nothing too crazy. But when you're fishing in smaller creeks and everything, you don't need a massive amount of castability, just something to make sure that your line doesn't get bird's nest. Overall, the inserts look very nice, and it seems like it's going to perform very well with the casting distance and everything, like I said. And one thing that it has that all rods should have, period, is a stainless steel hook keeper right here at the bottom. And I'm always a sucker for a cork grip. They're very light, they're very comfortable to fish with all day, and honestly, I just love the look of them. I went with the Akuma Seamar C10. Now 10 is usually indicative of a 1000 size reel. However, this is much closer to a 500 size reel, which is really what I'm looking for. This keeps the rod and reel very well balanced for an ultralight setup. Depending on the manufacturer, once you move up to a size 1000 reel, it can actually get drastically bigger than what you see here. But again, that depends on the manufacturer. Overall though, this is very aesthetically pleasing with a red and black color combination, it's really hard to go wrong. You also have cutouts around the spool, and that just reduces a little bit of the weight on there, as well as, let's be honest, looks kind of cool. Now you do get a very large bell wire, and while this isn't 100% necessary for a reel this size, personally, I've always liked the look and feel of a large bell wire, uh, just personal preference overall. Now the drag system is quite smooth and that's very important. You don't want a jerky drag system that just lets a lot of line out at once, stops, lets a lot of line out. That can actually pull the hook out of a fish's mouth. And when you're dealing with these small Aberdeen hooks, that's the last thing you want because they already come out fairly easily overall. Now this is a seven ball bearing system, which is fairly smooth. And I believe the P Fluger President has a seven ball bearing system as well. And a general rule of thumb is the more ball bearings you have, the smoother the reel is. So seven is much smoother than four, 10 is much smoother than seven. So this is kind of in the middle of the pack, but for $44, that's excellent. Now the EV grip knob is something I really do like on my Akuma reels. I think it's comfortable to fish with, has good texture, and I actually prefer EV over cork. Uh, sometimes with some cork knobs, they can actually dig into your hands throughout the day. So this is just a little bit more comfortable overall for me personally. You also have this bait switch, which allows for reverse movement. Uh, I've never used that before, but it's there if you want it. But the one thing you do want to look for is how good the lockup is whenever it pushes in reverse. If you have a really tight lockup, there's no movement backwards. That usually means that the gears are much better machined and they should last a little bit longer and it's a little bit more precise. Overall though, I'm looking forward to really using this reel, trying it out, and that's what we're gonna do. Well, the original plan was to take this and do some brim fishing, but unfortunately with everything going on, I tried to do a brim fishing trip and just did not work out. So I'm out here at the beach. I wanna to try to catch some mangrove snapper, which are bigger than brim. They fight much, much more aggressively than brim. So this will be a good test for the small reel. Oh, there's one. There we go. First little mango of the night. This one's actually quite a small one compared to what I usually see around this dock, but still, not too bad. Nice to get them. Uh, the circle hooks are what I like to use for mangrove. Those treble hooks are just a pain to deal with them. So nice small circle hook is really what you need, but pretty decent. We'll go ahead and throw them back and see if we can get a few more of these.
There's another small trout. Man, this little ultralight, he's so small, I was able to just pick him up with that. No net needed. Cool. Go ahead, get the hook out, throw him back, see if we can get another one. That's a better fish. Yep, there we go. Another little mangrove. This one's actually a little bit bigger. Oop, you stay right there. This is one of the most underrated fish out there, I believe. There's something. Looks like another trout. It is. I definitely need a longer net. There's a nice fish. Good trout, it seems like. Yeah, that one's a really good one. Whew. Another trout with the second to last shrimp. It caught some trout, it caught some mangrove snapper, did an excellent job. The ultralight rod, well, it was definitely bending a bit, which is to be expected with these larger fish, but it held its own and it brought them in. The reel was fantastic and the drag system was ultra smooth. I've been fishing for about four hours now and it was incredibly comfortable to do. At no point did I feel fatigued whatsoever. And I, again, I just love the ergonomics of this thing and how well balanced it is. Now I did do some pan fishing with it and again, it did an excellent job. Unfortunately, I forgot my video cameras at home so I didn't film any of it, but y'all got to see some really cool action tonight on an ultralight setup and it's something I never would have tried unless I didn't have that footage from the previous part. Anyway guys, I do hope y'all enjoyed this video and if you did, please make sure to share, like, subscribe and thanks for watching.